Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Mama Ifefo. Flambo family. Good afternoon, good evening. To those of us in the diaspora, those of us at home, those of us traveling and listening to our devices, a pleasant, pleasant good evening to each and everyone. It's a pleasure to be here this evening to address you, the people of Viewfort South, Viewfort North, and Labry, and I would like to say by extension, Schwozel and Soufre, because we are all in the south, southwest corner of the island. Soufre, brothers and sisters, is ready to right the wrong which they did in, on July 21st, 26, 2021. Viewfort South and North and Larry, are you all ready to bring that seat home to the United Workers' Party? That is the only savior that we have in the south of the island, the great and mighty United Workers' Party under the leadership of Alan Michael Chastney. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it has been said that the health of a nation is its wealth. And when you take a man who, has, who destroyed agriculture, a man who destroyed bananas, a man who brought agriculture to the lowest level in the history of this country, and you put him in charge of your hospitals, what do you expect? Moussa Kwaze Fig, Moussa Kwaze Jardin, Moussa Kwaze Te, Ek Jordia, Moussa Kwaze L'Hopital, Moussa Kwaze Moun L'Hopital, Kofon Mi, Kopul. That is what is happening to us, ladies and gentlemen. And what is happening at St. Jude's Hospital? I will speak about St. Jude's, because St. Jude's is in the south, and the people of Soufre are greatly, greatly impacted by what is taking place at St. Jude's. Many persons in Soufre travel to St. Jude's on a daily basis. Many children in Soufre are born at St. Jude's Hospital. And what is happening at St. Jude's today is an injustice to the people of the South, to the people of Soufre, and to the people of St. Lucia by extension. And we have to hold accountable brothers and sisters, not only the Labour Party, but the three main culprits for the state, the declining, the dismal state of healthcare in this country today in the South, the three culprits of Dr. Kenny Anthony, Alva Baptist, and Moses Musaja Baptist. They have to be held accountable. And the only way that you, the people of Viewfort South, and Library and Viewfort North, could hold those three gentlemen accountable and say enough is enough, we've had enough of you all, is at the ballot boxes when that bell is rung. <laughs> Only in the ballot boxes we can send a clear message to the Labour Party that no more of you all in the south of the island. Now permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to list or identify some of the, the grave areas of concern that the nurses, the doctors, the staff, the patients of the South are faced with on a daily basis at this hospital. And for over three years, the St. Lucia Labour Party, under the leadership of Philip J. Pierre, have failed to address and correct those concerns to make healthcare not only more affordable, but to make it more efficient to the people of the South. Just permit me a few minutes for me to list them to you. It is said by the staff at St. Jude's that supplies at the hospital are at its lowest ever supplies. And for any replenishing of supplies to be met by the administrators, they have to pay upfront. The hospital owes both local, regional, and international suppliers 
so much monies that nobody is giving them supplies on credit. They did not get chemical disinfectant. They did not get um, um, disinfectant, bleach, um, tissue. Just name it. They cannot go and purchase it from any local supplier if they do not pay in cash. And they are still owing those suppliers millions of dollars. And here you have a government that have raised record amount of revenue over a billion dollars in tax revenue by extorting the pockets of you, the people of St. Lucia, with the taxes on fuel, the cutting of subsidies, the additional 2.5% on your backs. And they cannot even pay the debt. They have squandered the pass our passport monies in billions, unaccounted for. And they cannot use any of those monies to pay down the debt at St. Jude's in order to get the right quantity of supplies to make that hospital a more efficient hospital for you, the people of the South. It's at its lowest. The main x-ray unit, which was purchased, installed, and operated, brought into operation, sorry, by the United Workers Party, have not been working for almost three years. During our term in government, a new x-ray machine was installed at St. Jude's. It broke down just a couple of months after we lose the elections. A simple part. Up to a day like today, the government of St. Lucia cannot either repair or replace that x-ray machine. And it's a small portable machine they have, which cannot undertake major x-ray services at the hospital. So what do they do, brothers and sisters? You see the ambulances going up and down from St. Jude's to private facilities in Viewfort with patients on a daily basis to get x-rays done. And you know what that is creating? It is costing you, the people, more money. Because the price you would have paid for the x-ray at the hospital is much lower than what you are now paying at the private facilities. It is now more maintenance on the ambulances. They are breaking down faster because they are always on the move. And that is a government that keeps on touting, putting people first. That is an uncaring government. That is a government, a prime minister, a minister of health with no conscience, with no love, with no empathy for you, the people of Ufort and the people of the South and St. Lucia. And that is an indictment on the Labour Party. It is an indictment on Moussa Jean-Baptiste as the Minister of Health. And it is an even worse indictment on Philip J. Pierre as the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance controlling the coffers of the country. And we have to hold those gentlemen accountable. The labs have to be done from private entities. Why? Because there are no reagents or the machines are not working. So again, you the people are the ones paying the price. All what the Labour Party is doing there, tout ça yo ka fè la, tout ce vieux plan yo ka yo ka yo ka chose la, yo pa ni pièce li dé pou fè rien, tout ce vieux policy a Ce vieux programme là, on va faire là. C'est nous, c'est les siens, nous peut payer là, qui a payé pour lui. We are paying the price because to go and um, take the, the your labs out to a private um, company, a private lab, it's costing you more money. And what you end up getting sometimes, there can be cross contamination of the specimens when it goes out of the hospital to the private facility. So sometimes the result you get is not even accurate because of cross-contamination. 
simple reagents they cannot supply the hospital with. A breakdown in the equipment, the lab equipment, they cannot repair or replace it. But billions of passport monies cannot be, account, cannot be accounted for. Lawyers are raking in millions on a monthly basis for processing our passports. Why? Because they are the friends, they are the cliques of the St. Lucia Labour Party. And you, the people, are suffering. We have to hold those free culprits accountable. And that, again, must be done in the ballot boxes. Another issue, brothers and sisters, persons have been asked, and this one, this one, two constituents of Sufre came to me with this one. I think two females, yeah, two females, they have to go and do some surgery, fibroid. And they ask them, when we call you in for the um, operation to get that surgery done, you have to walk with your own surgical thread. Can you believe that? It is a fact. Because the hospital does not have it, you have to go to Tapio Hospital to buy a roll of surgical thread for $200 a roll. So they have to come with two rolls, $400. St. Jude's Adan later, tell my brother, Abba Moussa, Abba Kam Labour Party, Alva Bakadiyan, Kenny Bakadiyan, that see a madame ne pas faire l'opération, ITA fibroid, St. Jude's Gadio, yo ne pouvait ni et puis fil là. Pour vie coup de yon après yon fait yon l'opération. Bagay qui pas jamais fait en health sector cette ci Never. During the worst of times, which was COVID, that never ever happened, ever took place under the leadership of Alan Chastney and the government of the United Workers Party. Never. And now, when we are raking in billions in, um, in tax revenue, when we are raking in billions in passport monies, not even surgical thread that is available at St. Jude's Hospital for after surgery, after operating on our people. And you're telling me that we have no reason to talk, that we should just sit back, relax, say nothing? We cannot. If we are to continue, sit back, relax, and allow Philip J.P. and the Labour Party to continue with business as usual, brothers and sisters, we will not have a St. Lucia again. We will not have a healthy nation again. Each and every one of us will suffer. We are doomed to fail. And we have to get rid of those gentlemen sooner than later. Brothers and sisters, a few weeks ago, there was a power outage. I, I think it was from Sufre going around. Viewfort suffered that outage as well. And the hospital, St. Jude's Hospital, went into darkness. The west wing of the hospital went into darkness because the standby generator at the hospital, the west wing, it has a faulty automatic transfer switch and the switch went bad about a year and a half ago and that switch has not been replaced it has not been replaced if you go on amazon now on google you go on ebay the price of an automatic transfer switch to put on a generator is between two and three hundred dollars US, five or eight hundred dollars. An automatic transfer switch. Kakute sek pour huit cent dollars. Et puis ini yon la ne edi mika monte pour deux lani. Musa passa by l'hôpital la pièce l'argent pièce ressource pour order ça pour yo samete y. An le generator se consomme yo peu courant la. And then five, six seconds, clatter generator like I've on l'hôpital and the current for nurse doctor for to avail l'hôpital. And what was worse about it, ladies and gentlemen, 
there is only one employee, one maintenance employee at St. Jude's Hospital who can manually put on the generator. And it so happened, unfortunately, that night, the gentleman was in a fete in Choiselle. So they couldn't get in touch with him. It took them about an hour and a half to get the gentleman to come to the hospital to manually start and put on the generator. And all that time, the West Wing in darkness. At that time, there was a patient, I think, from your constituency political leader who got chopped. There was a chopped patient they brought in there in the ER. The ER is on the West Wing, the labs on the West Wing, the extra unit on the West Wing, everywhere in darkness. Hospital, um, nurses, doctors have to be using the lights from the cell phones. You have a chop victim there. You have persons needing x-ray. You have persons for labs. Chaos in the hospital. Simply because a year and a half, the Labour Party cannot and have not ordered or purchased a automatic transfer switch to put on the standby generator. So if there is a power outage, the generator could kick in immediately. These guys have no love for the people of St. Lucia. The Labour Party is all about labour. All about labour. Keeping you in misery, in pain, in suffering. That is what those guys are about, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a short list, you know. It's a very long list, but I, I cannot even go through all the problems. No bed sheets, it's no pillows, not even tissue paper for the nurses, the doctors to wipe their hands after they've washed their hands, they've sanitized their hands. No paper towel, nothing. No you know, beds, even worse, no beds. No staff have to be bringing their own supplies to help out. You have water leaks and moles all over the place. You have staff demotivated, mass resignations taking place at, at St. Jude's. And what is worst, brothers and sisters, is that you have a board of directors at St. Jude's. And every member of that board is from the south of the island. Every member. Lawyers, teachers, bankers, both former bankers, current bankers, they are on the board from the south. And nobody is saying anything or doing anything to alleviate the plight of the people of Beaufort and the south of the island. So all of a sudden, the Labour Party is in office. All those problems we are faced with at St. Jude's Hospital. Not a word, not a word. Everybody is just protecting the victory. They're not protecting you. They don't care about your health and well-being. They're all concerned about protecting the victory. All the groups we had in view fought, what, what, five years ago? All the concerned citizens. Where are the concerned citizens today? Where are the concerned citizens today of view fought? What has changed? Viewfort is worse of it today than it has ever been under the Labour Party. St. Jude's is worse of today than it has ever been under Musa Jabaptis as the Minister of Health, the Member of Parliament for Mikud North, Kenny Anthony, former Prime Minister and Parliamentary Rep of Viewfort South, and Alva Baptiste in Library. They are the free culprits we have to hold accountable for what is happening today, brothers and sisters. The same Musa in opposition, every week he has a camera, video, video recording, taking photos of St. Jude's. I want to ask Musa, Moses Jean Baptist, when last you visited St. Jude's Hospital and see the condition of that hospital, the condition under which the nurses, the auxiliary staff, the doctors are working. When last? 
No more videos and photos anymore. Because you are there to protect the victory. That is what is happening today, brothers and sisters. And we need to hold them accountable. We need to hold them accountable. Brothers and sisters, another indictment. There is more, but I cannot go through all the issues because of time constraints, brothers and sisters. Another indictment on this Labour Party against you, the people of Beaufort, the South, is the GPH agreement, the GPH deal, which the government signed with Global Ports Holding. And Spider said it earlier, a 30-year lease of port castries and port souffre with an automatic 10-year renewal, which makes it 40 years. 40 years giving away those pots. But that's not all, brothers and sisters. That's not all. There is a clause in that agreement which clearly states that nothing ought to happen for any improvement of Port Viewfort or the establishment of a cruise terminal in Viewfort. So it means that many of us in this room here may never live to see 40 years again. Some of our children, our teenage daughters and sons, our young ones may never even live for another 40 years. And Viewfort is going to remain in the state that it is there, underdeveloped by the Labour Party for another 40 years. Can you imagine that? Which government, which party does that to a people? A government is supposed to empower its people. A government is supposed to create opportunities for its people. A government is supposed to ensure that people live a better life tomorrow than they live today. But you are putting them in a corner. You are keeping them in poverty for another 40 years. And that is why I'm telling you, the people of Viewfort South, Viewfort North, Labry, and by extension, the rest of St. Lucia, because we all have extended families all over the island. We need to vote the Labour Party out and bring back the United Workers' Party. Because imagine the benefits of a, of a cruise terminal in Viewfort, brothers and sisters. A cruise terminal where you have home porting. It expands all the way to Denry, I would say, and down to Souffre. With accommodation, sites and attractions, transportation, Farmers, fishermen, bakers, barbers, hairstylists, everybody eating a piece of that large pie. All of a sudden, I think Spider, you said it earlier, Viewfort would have been another city. Major employment would have been created. The standard of living of the people of the south down to Sufre would have been improved vastly. But no, this government is about protecting the victory. This government is about itself. And they went on to sign off our pots of Sufre and Castries, and they put a clause for 40 years, nothing can happen to Port Viewfort. No cruise terminal. But I'm telling them tonight, we'll come back again. Because when Alan Shastner becomes prime minister, when the United Workers' Party is returned to government, after Alan Shastner is sworn in, the very first meeting I want him to have is with Slasper and the cabinet secretary and to put this agreement on the table, this global port agreement on the table. And political leader, we are going to go through that agreement line by line, word by word, paragraph by paragraph, and anywhere we see 
we can scrap this agreement and give the patrimony of St. Lucia back to the people of Sufre, back to the people of Castries, we are going to scrap that agreement. We are going to do it. Guaranteed. And you, the people of Euphort, you are going to get the whole, uh, the first class cruise terminal that you rightly deserve <laughs> under Alan Chastney and the United Workers Party. Skinny, have told me five minutes, but there's another area. I beg your indulgence. You know? I beg your indulgence, Skinny. <laughs> 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 One second, Skinny. Crime. Crime. And you know, St. Lucia, Flambeau family, they keep on saying that you should not politicize crime. Crime should not be politicized. But I'm telling you tonight, that's not my notion. That is not my notion. Crime must be politicized. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, whichever party is in government, the buck to control crime, to deter criminals, to punish criminals, to bring criminals to justice, is on the, um, is, it lays with the government of the day. That responsibility is with the government of the day. And a party gets into government because of politics. The Labour Party, they campaigned on crime against the United Workers Party. So do not tell me not to politicize crime. The people gave you a mandate not only to deal with healthcare issues, social issues, infrastructure problems, education problems, they gave you a mandate through voting at the ballot boxes to deal with crime. So crime must be politicized. And the Labour Party have failed Viewfort. They have failed St. Lucia when it comes to crime. The Labour Party have no answers. They are clueless as to what to do to fight against crime. Brothers and sisters, when people have no hope, when people have no opportunities, when people lack faith, when people become desperate, what do you think they are going to do? When mothers and fathers cannot put food on the table for the children, and when the children cannot get a job, when they cannot pay bills, when they can't attend to themselves, they have to resort to crime. So the economic and social policies of a government, brothers and sisters, have a lot to do with crime. The bad policies of this government, the bad programs, economic and social programs of this government, the slowest economy in the Eastern Caribbean, the highest cost of living in St. Lucia, the betrayal of the people of the South and St. Lucia, that is an indictment on the government, that is a problem causing the crime surge we have in this country. And when people tell you it is the home, the issues festering crime from the homes also takes place as a result of the economic and social problems that families are faced with. So at the end of the day, whoever is in charge, my brother, my sister, the buck stops with you. Stops with you. And we do not want to hear, I was not the policeman, it was my father. No. You are the man in charge. You are the commander in chief. And you have to put in the strategies. You have to put in the measures. You have to put in the legal framework to deal with crime. And to get our streets, our home, our neighborhood safe again. Where is the canine unit? I was told it is only one dog that is there, Tyson. The dog is called Tyson. The dog cannot even do the work because you have to speak French to the dog. And we have no trainers who speak French. <laughs> it went back to Macnick. 
the scanners at the airport. Where are the scanners we had at the airport? Ladies and gentlemen, nothing has been done. And when you have a prime minister who tells you, who tells you, brothers and sisters, that, oh, it is just cigarettes. It is just cigarettes. A government making deals with an Eastern European criminal syndicate who has been arrested, charged, bailed for $1.3 million for contraband smuggling. Your prime minister is telling you it is just cigarettes. So everybody should bring in a container of cigarettes to St. Lucia. Do not pay customs duties. Go and sell it, black market, and nothing is going to happen to you. That's what the prime minister is telling us. The prime minister is also telling you that once the money is cleared by the banks, I'm okay with it. Once it is cleared by the banks. So our young children can go and sell a hundred keys of crack cocaine. Clear the money through the bank system. Through friends and all of that. Connections. And once that money is cleaned through the banks, it is okay. That is the example Philip J. Pierre and the Labour Party is setting for our young children. And you want to talk about crime? You want to tell me not to politicize crime? The words of the Prime Minister is encouraging criminality in this country. When you look at the makeup of the cabinet, of the government, it tells you what you want to, what you already know. So what do you expect our young children to do, brothers and sisters? This country is already sinking, view thought. We do not want to get to the bottom of that ocean. And the only way we can do that is to get rid of Kenny Anthony, get rid of Musa and Alva Baptist in the library. And if you believe, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, before I close, I want you to look at three constituencies. Three constituencies. Compare them to Viewfort South, to Viewfort North, and Labrie. Look at Mikud South under the leadership of Alan Shastley, his representation, for five years. For three years. Look at the transformation of Mikud South. Look at Schwezel under the representation of Honorable Bradley Felix for three years. And I'm not bragging. But Spider, look at Sufre. <laughs> look at Sufre. After 20 years of labor in Sufre and three years of United Locals representation, look at Sufre. So, Labry, if you fought south, if you fought north, you all have had those men for almost 30 years. And they cannot come close to any one of us. Any one of us. They can't fit in our shoes. The onus is on you all to do what is right. Forward ever, backward never. Brothers and sisters, I thank you. I wish I had more time, but we are going to continue that conversation. Good night. Thank you very much. The words of a worker.